Hello guys and welcome to the first lesson in this Linux course and this lesson is a presentation and overview about Linux. So first of all I would like to ask a question and I'll give you five seconds to think about this question and this question is what do you think Linux is? Well, Linux is an operating system just like Windows, Mac, or Unix. And now that we know that Linux is an operating system, let's see what exactly is an operating system. Okay, now an operating system is a mediator between the hardware of the computer and the softwares or apps that you install. The operating system controls the resources that are in the hardware like for example the hard disk, the RAM, the processor, and manages them. In other words, if there is a particular app or software, as a user you want to run it. For example, an application like Microsoft Word. And this application requires 128 megabytes of RAM to run on. The operating system will reserve 128 megabytes of the RAM to give it to the application that you are running. Another example, if you are downloading an application which is 5 gigabytes in size, the operating system reserves this 5 gigabytes of size from the hardware for the application that you are downloading. Okay, now we know that Linux is an operating system. Let's have a quick overview on the Linux history. It is important that you know a bit of the history of Linux before you start. The first version of Linux has been released in September 1991. And it was made by a student that was in Helsinki University called Linus Torvalds. Linus Torvalds released Linux as an operating as an open source. And open source means that anybody can see the code in which the application was written with and edit it. Although you can't edit any open source application because each open source application has a license agreement. So now before you download any application that is open source, before you would like to use it and start editing in it, you must first see its license agreement. So you can see if you can edit in it, or you can only see its code without editing in it. So open source didn't start with Linus Torvalds. It started with Richard Stallman, this man right here, in, eight, in 1983. Richard Stallman was a researcher in the MIT, and he had ambition that the world will contain free applications that are open source, which gives the users the ability to edit in it and share those applications. Richard Stallman started the GNU project. He wanted to make a free open source operating system. He started the GNU project in 1991. He wanted to make a free open source operating system, but he couldn't reach the proper method or the kernel to make this operating system. In 1991, the GNU project made a lot of tools. One of the most important tools it made was the C programming language compiler, and it's called the GNU C compiler. Okay, now what is the link between Richard Stallman and his GNU project and Linus Torvalds and Linux? As said moments ago that Richard Stallman couldn't reach the proper method or the kernel to make this operating system. But Linus Torvalds did reach the proper method to start an operating an open source operating system. In December 1991, the 0.10 of Linux was released and to log in there wasn't any user or password and the operating system 0.10 didn't support any hard disks except for the 80 hard disks as time moved on 
Linux started to spread wide and develop across companies and companies started releasing the kernel of the Linux for people to edit in it and develop it. Now Linux, Linux, uh, Linux is an operating system for many things including mobile devices, computers uh, in companies and personal computers and it is now trusted and used by many of the large known companies. Okay, now we know that Linux is an open source operating system. That means that any user or organization can edit in it. As time moved on, companies started to edit in Linux and release new versions according to the company's name. Like for example, Red Hat Linux, SUSE Linux, Ubuntu Linux. And each name over here is a distribution. For example, Red Hat is a distribution, SUSE a distribution, and each one of those is a distribution. And each distribution of those has a different release. For example, uh, sorry, I mean each distribution of those has different releases. For example, now there's Red Hat 7, there's Ubuntu 14, and so on. In this picture, there are some of the distributions of Linux. There are more than 50 distributions of Linux. Now, is there a big difference between the distributions? The answer is no. There isn't a big difference between distributions. You may only find slight changes in the commands and slight changes in the locations of the configuration files. There also may be differences in the security. For example, there is a distribution called Trustix which is mainly focusing on the security side of the operating system. Alright, now let's have a look at the Linux advantages. From the advantages of Linux is that it's free, but not all distributions are free. For example, Red Hat will give you its support by money, as well as SUSE, but all other distributions, either than SUSE and Red Hat, and the support are uh, free. Sorry, I would like to give a, a better example or make this statement more clear that the Red Hat gives its uh, support by money as well as SUSE, but all other distributions are free. From the advantages of Linux also is that it has good stability. You can have a Linux server that is working for a year without problems. It's easy to install. It works on any platform. It is more secure, which means less security risks. But of course, there is no operating system with 100% security. It has flavors. For example, if you want Linux for desktop, then you will go for Ubuntu. You want Linux for server, you would likely go for CentOS. If you want to test a penetration test for your operating system, you will go for Kali Linux. One of the best advantages is that Linux does not slow down over time, unlike other operating systems that may slow down over time. It has many free softwares and it installs softwares easily. Okay, now Linux also has disadvantages. If you are a new, if you are, if you are a new Linux user, you may take some time to learn Linux, but that doesn't mean that Linux is hard to learn. After you see this course, you will realize that it isn't hard to learn Linux. When you come to Linux, most applications that you deal with in other operating system, for example, Windows. You will forget them when you come to Linux and you will find applications in Linux that are similar to those that you are used to in Windows. Of course, of the disadvantages is the technical support. That if you have a problem, you will have to research it in Google or ask a friend. But be sure that it, it's most likely that any problem that you will face, probably another user has faced the same exact problem and have shared the solution across the internet. 
Okay, as you can see over here, these are very large companies that use Linux as an operating system. For example, you have Google, you have Facebook, you have Twitter, McDonald's, and even NASA uses Linux. Schools, colleges, and universities in Germany, Russia, India, Pakistan use Linux. So, as you can see that most or a lot of the big companies or the large companies around the world actually use Linux. Okay, so now why CentOS in this course? Well, CentOS is a free distribution and it has all of the features of Red Hat distribution. It has good stability and it has good speed. Thanks for watching and I hope you find this lecture of good benefit for you. Thank you very much.